who makes these rules. We'll go into the prevalent laws governing lunar land and mining rights. In what manner did these rules come about? We're going to establish the historical precedent and the spirit in which the current laws were made. What are the major political challenges facing those who have tried to journey to and settle the moon? The answer to this, this question lies in the prospects of the worth of lunar ex industry as well as gaps in current law. Lastly, given we've solved the political problems and created an appropriate treaty, who can enforce it? This is probably the trickiest problem we'll examine. So the rules are made by UN Copias, the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, which is a subpart, subgroup of the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs. The Outer Space Treaty, signed right before the first moon landing, was proposed by the United States to cool down the Cold War and develop a more benevolent role for the U.S. in space. A basic summary of the relevant clauses are that no nation can claim land, everyone is responsible for what they do out there, and every nation maintains their own laws on their own craft. The Moon Treaty is pretty much the same as the Outer Space Treaty, except that nobody can claim the land on the moon. And if people were to start mining the moon, everybody has to get a piece of the action. Can you go on the difference between common and civil law? Common law was uh, originated in the 11th century by William the Conqueror when he started claiming lands under his name. It's it has origin in the feudal systems, and the main thing is that the crown holds all the title to the land. Similar to communism, the state and the government owns everything. It's, it's distributed equally to all of the citizens and residents of that country. The problem with this, the problem with this is that it explicitly violates the Article 2 of the OST, which states that states may not own any portions of outer space. Contrasting that is civil law. Um, France is a practitioner, practi practitioner of this method, sorry. And it states that property can exist stands sovereignty, sovereignty, which is good because this does not explicitly violate the, violate the OST. Private corporations, private entities can own land on the moon because they are not, uh, not under the control of their government it's under civil law, violate the OST. Private corporations, private entities can own land on the moon because they are not uh, not under the control of their government it's under civil law. <clears throat> uh, so, in the, the OST never explicitly mentions private, own, private ownership. What is a private corporation? What is a private entity? Private corporations are interested in the bettering of mankind and may gain international support and therefore pursue lunar land rights and ownership. Private corporations, someone's either sponsored by no company, by no states, or by many states. And actually, it's better if they're sponsored by many states. This is a very, very expensive venture. It's going to take a long time and a lot of money to get this going. If you have a lot of states involved, they can all donate much smaller sums of money and still all be involved, still making it a private corporation. You like that, folks? No nation can claim rights, but a person can, thus a corporation can. Because if you're a person, you're a corporation. So you like the little games that they were playing way back in the day? Uh, when they were planning on doing what they're starting to do right now. A uh, good movie, of course, is Moon. Check it out if you haven't seen it before. But uh, that's the future. I mean, they're just going to create these little robots. And they're going to sit out there and they're going to be uh, running some machines. And they're going to be mining. And the money that's going to be used to build up this infrastructure... And, um, as an investment is going to be taxpayer money, right? Taxpayer money. You know, we don't have any money, sorry, for, uh, you know, pensions and Social Security, but we're going to be going to start uh, mining on the moon, and we're going to use your taxpayers' uh, tax dollars to do it. And, well, you know, the corporations are there for the betterment of the human race, and uh, you can be rest assured that they're going to divvy up all those profits equally to to every person. So just 
really a bunch of crap. Google Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, April 23rd, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, ddarko2012, ddarko2013. All right, Google billionaires Eric Schmidt and Larry Page have teamed up with James Cameron for Space Mining Adventures. And uh, they have some nice little symbols here that they have. Resources Development Administration, RDA. Then uh, look at this. Uh, Waylon Utani Corporation. So, uh, yeah, again, you can figure out the symbology in there if you like. Uh, Lunar Industries, LTD. Oh, look at that, a wing disc. And you have federal colonies. So this is via Reuters. Google executive Schmidt billionaire co-founder Larry Page has teamed up with Avatar director James Cameron and other investors to back an ambitious space exploration and natural resources venture, details of which will be unveiled next week. It says the fledging company called Planetary Resources will be unveiled at a Tuesday news conference at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, according to a press release issued this week. Aside from naming some of the company's high-profile backers, the press release disclosed tantalizingly few details, saying only that the company will combine the sectors of space exploration and natural resources in a venture that could add trillions of dollars to the global GDP. Again, going to be redistributed, uh, redistributed uh, like uh, tax dollars from the rich countries to the poor in the name of climate change. So... The Wall Street Journal reported Friday that the planetary resources will explore the feasibility of mining natural resources from asteroids, a decades-old concept. So the innovative startup will create a new industry and a new definition of natural resources, according to the press release. So so this here are Ross Perot Jr. and Google's founders launching a new asteroid mining company. So this is for asteroids. It wasn't like the moon they were talking about, but... I'll post the links in YouTube's video description. Lunar mineral rights secured by Dr. Joseph Resnick, Lieutenant Colonel O'Neill, Ph.D., U.S. Army retired, and Guy Kramer, a loophole in space law, allows individuals and companies to hold mineral rights on the moon, Mars, and other celestial bodies. Just in recent news, they're actually going to start bringing back materials from Mars. That's what they're going to be uh, trying to look at now instead of... Um, uh, doing the older missions. They're going to start trying to bring material back from Mars. I just read that in a news article. Growing concern from scientists that these rights might be held hostage have been alleviated by the three-man North American team of those individuals who have acquired the mineral rights for 95% of the side of the moon that faces the Earth, the polar regions, and 50% of the far side of the moon. So is the cheetah bot and the robot that could run, climb stairs, do push-ups, and everything else. Uh, is being created and uh, the Pentagon's putting in orders for these uh, dual layer lenses uh, basically with a HUD display. With the mineral rights secure, the ROC team wants to, to oversee the extraction process for HE3 and other minerals for any other robotic and human ventures to obtain these materials to ensure the moon does not become a series of scared surface mines visible from Earth or future lunar orbiting space stations. This is, of course, after they set aside 8.9 million acres around Apollo 11 lunar landing site and designated as a World Heritage Site. The ROC, ROC sorry, team has announced that it was holding more than 75% of lunar mineral rights to allow for the extraction of this helium-3 and other minerals for the advancement of space exploration, earth and space sciences, and safer, more efficient energy production. So we'll see what happens this summer around the Olympics if they do get their false flag going, their stage alien invasion or incoming asteroids or whatnot, uh, so that they can put on their show and say, see, we need to explore space and we're going to need lots of cash. So, And that's the big reason for the false stage alien invasion or whatever it is, uh, asteroid. Um, so moving on here, we have $63 million Russian taxi ride. So it says the space shuttle Discovery flying piggyback on a Boeing 747 for its last hurrah flight around the Washington Monument and White House was a grim reminder of misplaced and misspent priorities. It says the storied 30-year space shuttle program, which began with the launch of the Columbia in April 81, ended last July. It says since then, the price of a Russian taxi ride has reached the International Space Station. Uh, aboard the Suez spacecraft has skyrocketed from $55 million per seat uh, to basically $63 million per seat. And uh, the article basically goes on there and says all of the 355 space flyers who flew the 130 or uh, so missions over 30 years built up this uh, football field-sized lab 
and then they shut down their program to get there. So, and then they go on and make the connection between blowing uh, trillions of dollars on Iraq and Afghanistan wars, saying that by the time we exit in 2014, which we know we won't, the two wars will have costed U.S. taxpayers $3 trillion. Next up, how do you like your meat? Bioengineers in the Netherlands are now growing meat in a laboratory where the future of food is being prepared in the Petri dish. Petri dish. So that's the future of food. So it goes on there, gives you some scary statistics uh, from the UN saying how it's going to accelerate climate change to um, grow this meat and whatnot. And it says the idea has been around since 31 when Winston Churchill uh, wrote in a magazine that separate parts of an animal would be grown in a lab in the future to escape the absurdity of growing the whole chicken in order to eat the breast of the wings. So kind of an ethical thing there. You know, KFC was uh, supposedly growing their chickens without any hair, without any heads. And then all of a sudden they had to stop calling their um, their their company uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's why I went to KFC. And then now all of a sudden they're back to Kentucky Fried Chicken. So I wonder if just their little lawsuit expired or what. Well, let's not forget this because I've covered this so many times. The British royal family has their own Aberdeen Angus beef farm, organic beef. The Communist Party in China has their own organic fields of food. They want you, you to eat this shit, literally. Crap. Well, they eat something uh, totally different. So scientists will soon create unlimited supply of humans in the lab. For the first time, eggs grown from human stem cells could be fertilized with human sperm cells later this year, potentially adding one more peg in the ladder towards reproduction. And it goes on here without human interaction. This is, of course, you know, part of Brave New World. So just like synthesized food and whatnot, in this case, it would entirely bypass a woman's donation of her eggs. So based off a study from February that was announced involving Japanese women who were uh, reprodu whose reproductive stem cells sorry, were donated because they were undergoing gender reassignment surgery, uh, said the test would validate whether they could be used to eradicate human sexual activity and infertility. The Independent goes so far as to mention the elixir of youth wherein women of any age are full of stem cell derived, sorry if I butcher this, but oocytes remaining fertile and youthfully healthy forever. So the scientists argue that using stem cells to grow eggs in lab dishes might one day preserve cancer patients fertility. So you know this, the, the infertility is, is there for a reason, like I said, it's not coincidence, it's to uh, call the population numbers along with cancer. That's why they're both phenomenons, right, today. So this is part of the brave new world and you won't be a part of it. These people are going to uh, basically evolve into a different species. I don't think they're going to evolve into a different species. I just think that that the lower class are going to de-evolve. So they're not going to get better or any different. They're just going to allow everybody else to turn into these mutant blobs. So, and that was actually covered in a BBC article. If you don't, you know, if you don't believe me, real life Barbie seeks to be the world's most convincing doll, but does she even exist? So we know that Barbie is kind of used as a programming uh, imprinting device for. Uh, young but apparently the girl is real i mean it's kind of spooky some of the uh, pictures but uh, next up texas mom behind prom queen billboard says daughter not chosen and being harassed right so she's got to be the prom queen so you know it's all about the popularity contest and uh, the mom trying to live vicariously through her children so you know she could feel like she's youthful and young again william and kate doll and where do they get the ideas from well william and kate doll sells out the barbie dolls of prince william and the duchess of cambridge have sold out in the united states before they would even went on sale so maybe 150 years ago they would probably be burning these things because they had to do with the queen and that and uh, uh, royalty but now no they're sold out because everybody wants to be a queen and a princess like Pip pregnant man Thomas Beatty splits from white so the individual who made headlines in 2008 when he became the world's first known man to give birth has split from his wife of nine years Kate Perry becomes the few the proud and the part of me this is actually from a month ago I didn't know but it's part of a Marine Corps recruiting video and part of girl power so that's right Kate Perry is one of the tough chick and part of me music video yeah, someone says she looks like uh, Elijah Wood. She gets a little fight with her boyfriend and it runs off to the army, right? Marines to train women for combat. So that's actually what it was for. U.S. Marines announced plans to start training women for combat. This is just recently. We have one in two graduates are now jobless or underemployed. Dutch government collapses in reemergence of Europe's far right. Remember Friday, EU politicians expressed concern over the rise of the far right. Then we have Greek town to implement a bartering system without the euro. Tired of austerity, many Portuguese are returning to the land. Spain bans cash. Italian police seize more fake bonds, along with certificates of deposit for gold that date back to the 30s.